Yeah, finally, today I'm getting ready to ship all the Dean Rail energy monitors to my crowd supply backers. Uh, it has been a hard few days uh, testing, assembling, updating firmwares. Uh, last batch of firmwares were updated uh, over the air. We want to open up the box and uh, make the small changes. Uh, here is a unit that I'm just going to demonstrate how to plug things into on. Um, you can see the Molex Nanofit connector to the uh, 3.5 millimeter, millimeter stereo jack uh, adapter cable here. This is for two, two unit, two ATM 90 ET26 units. And on the, this end there's the Phoenix Contact uh, 5.08 millimeter uh, uh, 240 volt input. And uh, yeah, so the, at the back here is the clip that goes on the Dean rail. And the front side, the Molex connectors connect here, and the Phoenix contact connect connector, well, uh, is at the back here. Uh, yeah, so, and then I'm just gonna briefly go through uh, how the data will come through on ThinkSpeak. And uh, there is, uh, there are two buttons here uh, in the new version WebMOS OLEDs. Button A is on top of the reset button and button B uh, is independent on the other side. Button A is shared with one of my chip select pins, so I cannot really use button A, but the reset pin can be pressed, uh, and button B uh, can also be pressed. So uh, button B is currently linked towards sort of a factory reset. So if you set up your energy monitor and you're not happy with their access point setups and, or so on, uh, you can press button B to go back to factory settings and then start again with your calibration parameters and so on. Uh, and then you can obviously reset, uh, get to the reset. So if you're pressing these buttons, it can be live. The front is isolated on this, uh, which I can just demonstrate briefly in a minute. And uh, then you can uh, uh, press them with some sort of a plastic uh, uh, plastic screwdriver type thing or not really a screwdriver maybe a chopstick or anything that's insulated uh, but the front is insulated on this anyway yeah so just gonna go through some uh, plugging in and uh, getting that up so this is the chance to uh, configure the energy monitor when you start up uh, first uh, connect to the access point that it provides in AP mode when it's not hooked up to your Wi-Fi yet uh, just refresh on into 168.4.1 you can see the all the access points around you and some parameters for calibration I want to update the firmware uh, because I'm missing some parameters in particular this version so just choose the firmware bin file uh, open it and then uh, yeah get ready to update press update so the uh, firmware gets transferred you will see the screen flash if you have the OLED screen running so the firmware is flashing just wait for a few seconds Yeah, firmware is now flashed and it tries to go to the update page, but due to the reboot, the Wi-Fi has dropped off. Connect to the Wi-Fi again. Yeah, you can just uh, uh, take back the do update path and go back to the root of the uh, root of the page. Yep, and then. Yeah, you get a list of access points again and down here is the important bits to configure data sent to ThingSpeak, the API key and the ThingSpeak server. So today we will go through plugging in the um, Dean Rail Energy Monitor. This is the high volt agent. I have labeled the neutral and uh, two, uh, two lives. Uh, there is a neutral, live, gap and another live. And on this end is the Molex Nanofit connector for the current clamps. This is the Molex Nanofit current connector and it is an adapted to 3.5 millimeter stereo jacks current clamps uh, normally come with. At least the uh, affordable YHDC ones. So yeah, uh, plug in the... Uh, so just make sure everything is switched off before you handle any high voltages. This might take a bit of coaxing, uh, push it down and you'll hear it click into place. Cool. Uh, I'll plug in this 
so this goes in the first slot so there are two current clamps yeah, I've got a little one and a two marked out here uh, the units you will receive uh, just the, on the bottom right is the channel one and the top left is the channel two so just plug them in here this will require a bit of coaxing too to move the board slightly up and press fit locked the clip is locked here and I will plug in the current channel 3.5 millimeter into channel 1 it's time to turn it on now that uh, it turned on and the metering is live uh, I have set up all the things speak API keys which you can set up when you first boot up and the meter is in soft AP mode you can also run your custom things speak server which is a basic HTTP post request with server uh, in here all my settings are uh, there I have set up eight fields which is what the maximum on things speak for one particular what they call channel is uh, eight fields in it and uh, some data from yesterday and then some data from testing today uh, then it's easier to read here so just uh, zoom in on the voltage for a bit so maybe the last 10 results here yep so you can see the voltage curve there it's good I can do the same for everything else as well of the only other ones of interest so the power and the voltage so the voltage is feeding in there's another voltage path channel here Stem values, please. And another power channel here. Right, so there's a bit of noise, which is around a one watt mark, plus minus one. Otherwise, it's uh, pretty clean. The voltages follow the same shape. There's a bit of scaling issue, which you can fi fix uh, using calibration parameters, which are available. In the initial web interface so yeah well, let's uh, turn on a load and see what happens so uh, it obviously takes 20 seconds to grab the first data point I have sort of set up the code that it uh, shows on the interface every second and then uh, uh, you could potentially do an average over 20 seconds and upload it here We have got our first power reading here, which is 115 watts, which is pretty good. The rated voltage, rated power for this particular lamp is 116. It varies a bit based on line voltage and obviously some measurement errors as well. The second data point is good. Now let's power it off. Uh, remember to power off loads before uh, taking current clamps off multiplier resistors because uh, this is an open circuited current clamp and it can produce high voltages when it's uh, when it's open it's a current loop that's inductive and open open load so it can produce high voltages even though there are safety uh, voltage clamps within the blue current clamp uh, just yeah just be careful with that I'll plug this into channel 2 now and as you can see all this stuff is isolated or neutral level so it's uh, fairly safe yeah I don't have that much tolerance for AC Yeah, so now we turn on the load, attach your channel two, which is down here. So this is the real power for channel two. I'll wait for a reading to come through. Yep, and we have our 115, 113 watt reading. Let's wait for a second reading in another 20 seconds. second reading is pretty stable 112 uh, and we can yeah, power this off now
wait for the voltage uh, color rating to go down. There's a new voltage reading there. The chart here updates asynchronously. And our power levels are back to zero. So hopefully you can get a pretty dense measurement of your energy usage. Thank you for watching. Bye.